like to do is four stable, five racks, and six to eight ranges, depending on how I feel in a bunch of seeds workshop. As you're starting in DM, every villager that you add onto a building, they lose 50% of their, their building rate. So you want to keep all of these villas split to different uh, buildings. Now, as you start, you should grab them and you want to make the building where they're not gonna move and all the buildings are one tile apart. This helps for movement, right? So the villas can walk through, your military can walk through, nothing gets bumped, uh, bugged out, uh, doesn't create choke points where your army's uh, stuck. So let's say we had a building here, now the military would have to walk around from the top. So we want one space for movement of bills and military. And we also want to shift click these bills. So while you're only really waiting for your scout to get to the opponent, you should be making all these buildings. Uh, we set them down, and if you hold shift when you're building the building, the vill will keep maintaining their build of the building they're actually on. I also get all my hot tree groups going at this point in the game. So now I have all my buildings. They're coming through. I, I'm shift queuing all of these. And then I can shift queue these villagers to other buildings. My stables are going to come out, and they're going to go directly across the map with the first few few knights. So now we've got our set buildings down, about 15. Huns need a little bit more, again, because they don't have that big siege like Onager, Siege Onager, uh, Heavy Squirp, Bombard Cannon. They do have rams, which will come into play, uh, but it's really important that you get your base amount of buildings down for the military composition you want. So. For something like Kelt, you might see a bunch of barracks and a bunch of Seeds Workshop because they can make Onager and Scorpion, which would take the role of like the ranges, right? So we have something to kill Halbs, we have something to kill units that come in towards our Siege. So we don't really need the ranges in a Kelt type build. Obviously this is Huns, but they, they shift, they change, and you should really um, think about what composition you want and then make those buildings. After you get this down, the next phase, you've got all these vills, right? Obviously you're going to be raided as you're playing against human beings. They're going to come in, they're going to kill these vills. So not all these are going to survive, right? These You're going to be frantically just trying to keep these alive. Again, the shift queuing will help. You grab the villager, you hold shift, you, you click her over here. Now, as soon as she's done with this building, she'll go to the next one. After this, you have to decide, as you're looking across the map, do I need to play really aggressive for a hill or not. So I don't see any hills here, which means this is a map where I would probably personally drop TC. So I've got seven bills. I like to get to seven TCs. So I'm counting them. So I'm at five laid down now. Six. Seven. I find that seven gets me to the villager count that I prefer. Um, I prefer to shoot up to about 120 vills before stopping in DM. And then I like to castle around to take space and hills. We look at the map to see if we need to go forward. If there was a big fat hill right here, we would have to send vills forward and make castle and go forward with our army right away and try and control the hill. But since there's not, there's no threat of a position win, so like a castle here would be good. Yes, there's a hill, but then the behind it, there's a lot of wood and also a, a gold bonus. So you're thinking per player, there's an extra gold and stone around the sides of the map, and then there's a lot of wood lines. Now, these aren't the best castles. A castle like this, though, would defend two golds, and now I can farm around it, which is why I like to keep them kind of tight. So now I'll have two castles and TCs for Vils to go in and a bunch of farmland. The first thing you do is you raid their base. We're going to be targeting all those Vils that are trying to spread out and get that really high uh, building rate. That's number one thing we're attacking. And then we're going to grab, you know, a few of these, maybe four or something on each side, and you're going to be patrolling them around the sides of the map. And you really do want to get a ranged unit if you can. Obviously, you can't 
you can't always do that. Sometimes you just got to race there and hope you get there before they get uh, the vills walled in. But there will be vills scattered across the map just making castles. So we've got to make sure we get there and, and see what's going on. Um, it will also help us determine which way he's attacking sometimes. Uh, you send four knights out here, for example. There's a TC on the gold or a castle, something going. If you notice that he, they're getting a lot of halbs or uh, military defending, you can take your paladin out and just kind of kind of camp on the outskirts, maybe rally back and forth with the paladin over here. You know they're going to come out with uh, monks for relics, there's one right here, um, or sending vills out, kind of like we did, right? We sent vills out around the map to the golds and to good castle spots, so they're going to be doing that too. Relics after this as well, so the next thing I would do is I would make two or three monasteries and start them going for the relics. Relics are really important in DM. You start with all the upgrades, so every gold you get is way stronger in DM than in random map, because you don't have to pay for any of the, the upgrades, you don't have to wait for upgrades. Gold is super strong, if not the best thing to get. That is a brief overview of how I would say to start Huns, uh, but just general game knowledge of spreading the vills out, getting uh, TCs on your gold mines, getting castles to control land, and then uh, of course you're going to try and take fights that you can win. You want to be very um, efficient with your military units. You can throw some halves away, but you really got to be careful with um, your, your high gold units like Paladin. This gold's gonna burn up pretty quick. You gotta be careful with those. Halbs, you got lots of lumber around the map. That's fine, you can burn those all day. All right, guys, I know that was a lot to digest. I hope this was helpful. I had lots of fun preparing this for you. I would like to give a big shout out to Sableton especially for all the editing, but also Ryder and Adam for all the work that they've done as well. This was a group effort, and we look forward to creating more instructional videos for all you nerds in the future. See you on the battlefield.